Hey guys, uh, Jason from Geoffa Designs here, and uh, in this video I'm going to be going through the concept of executor switches, um, as I'm calling them. I don't know if they have a proper name. Uh, but basically, uh, executor buttons that you're using to fire commands, but that work in a group. So I know a lot of people have seen, like in uh, interactive layouts, when you have like a group of uh, colors or something, where you pick one and you can see if that one is active, and so you can see which color you have selected in your layout. Um, and it's not uncommon to see people using executors in this fashion to, to have them uh, just as buttons in your punt setup uh, with a command in them and no actual lighting information stored in them. However, um, just storing them as empty executors, you would have this effect where as you fire them, unless you have a command in there specifically to off everything else, and this applies whether you're doing it as macros or uh, executors, uh, unless there's a command to off everything else, you're going to end up with everything stuck on or no form of visual feedback to see what you've selected. Um, so, what I've uh, done to, to get around that is, uh, so you can see here, uh, I've got my uh, sequence executor sheet open uh, and I've got one of my color executors selected. Um, each one of these buttons is changing the fade time of my uh, color executors but and it's doing that just every cue inside of any sequence that ends with underscore col uh, and assigning the fade time of all those cues. Uh, but you can see that there is no command that says off all of this group minus this particular executor or anything like that. Uh, what I've done instead is if we hit uh, clear out here I do select fixtures on this, which is just double tapping your uh, select key, uh, we see I have this uh, dummy channel here, this dummy fixture of uh, 50,002. Um, and in that fixture is being stored at full in every one of these buttons. Combine that with the off on overwritten feature, and it sets it up so that when you click on one, the rest of them are turned off because the lighting information stored in them, I say lighting with quotations, um, stored in them has now been overwritten. Without any content whatsoever in the executor, there's nothing to overwrite. Um, so you give it a single channel with a single parameter, a single fixture with a single parameter uh, in all of those, and now they all work as a group so that when one is active, the rest shut off. Uh, and the nice thing about this, one, you don't have to take the time to set up an interactive layout and do image swaps and all that. Uh, two, if you want to expand it, it's super qu uh, quick and easy. Uh, even just to set it up, it's super quick and easy. But um, let's say I want to add a fade six here. So I'm going to go into my sequence pool. I'm just going to copy this sequence to a new one. Assign that over to an executor here. And now, rename it for fade six. Edit the command to actually perform that. And now since it's a copy of this sequence, it already has that fixture stored at full. So when I hit that, it acts just like the rest of them. And in a matter of, what, three actions, two, three actions, uh, you can set up so that you can add another button to your setup. Um, and I do this for my uh, position fade times, for my color fade times, and then for my delay sweeps, which didn't finish getting set up in this. Um, one extra little touch I do like to put in it though is uh, if you can see these uh, orange corners on the executors up here, uh, what I've done there that shows that there's some kind of filter being applied to executor playback. Um, so I've applied this world of dummy switches so if I uh, do select fixtures on this we can see over here that it's just a bunch of dummy channels which I've dubbed kill switches and I realize it's not really what a kill switch is, but whatever. Um, so I've, I've got that list of, of dummy channels that don't actually ever output to the stage. So I apply that to these just as a safety when storing that at full to make sure that no other information got stored in there so that you don't accidentally go, you know, go to hit your uh, fade time button and see strobes start going off or something like that. Um, and that's pretty much the whole concept. And uh, what, I think there was one other thing. Um, yeah, you don't even have to have them patched. Like, they don't have to be an actual patch address. They just have to be fixture information that exists in a queue. Uh, so, I find, like I said, I find it to be super easy, uh, super quick to set up, and a lot easier to deal with than building an interactive layout or a plugin or whatever. So, um, 
yeah, there's there's a thing to build some some buttons. So go make the buttons and play with the buttons. And I uh, hope the buttons are helpful for for some people out there. And I hope this uh, video was helpful. So follow me on the social media things on Facebook and my website and the link and all of that good stuff. And uh, hope it helped you guys out.